Around 2015, Ella Fitzgerald's son, Ray Brown Jr., said to me, My mother was all about the audience. At first, the comment seemed a stock phrase, one that could be attributed to any performer, whether a Las Vegas headliner or street corner busker. And yet, the more I wrapped myself in the life and music of this peerless artist, her grit and grace, her raw power and refined elegance, her commercial savvy and artistic genius, the more I returned to her son's words. From her first performance to her last, Ella Fitzgerald had a pact with her audience. As she aged, she refined that pact into a mission to use music for social harmony, to turn an audience into a family, and to create a community. When Ella sings, when she moves on stage, it's like learning how to live, wrote a journalist in San Juan, Puerto Rico in 1973. That was the point, as Ella Fitzgerald said in 1985 when she was 68. Explaining herself to another reporter, she fused the artist and the woman. I want to make you feel happy, she said. I want you to feel that you're enjoying what I am doing. I want you to feel love, just like you were loving a person, not just because I'm a singer. Her one-time road manager painted for me a scene he routinely encountered. Pacing nervously backstage, twisting her signature handkerchief, waiting to go on and sing before a crowd ranging anywhere from 300 to 12,000, Ella would review her set list. Are there enough offerings on the menu to satisfy everyone? Am I going to forget someone's favorite song? Are all the seats filled? And then, after the show, new questions would arise. Did they like me? Did you see that person in the balcony who fell asleep? Was I okay? If not, whose fault was it? No matter. There would be another day. Another concert, another hall, another city, another country, another continent, another audience with whom she could perfect her genius.